good evening to all. And uh, uh, I'll be speaking the old way, leaving the, the uh, younger fashion to Anna. Um, well, I've been asked to, to, to say a few words, guys, of introduction about uh, the, the Arab uprising in general before uh, focusing on Syria, which is what I've been asked more specifically to speak about in light of uh, the, uh, the recent uh, events. <clears throat> so first of all about the, 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 the Arab uprising in, in, uh, in, in general, uh, I think that uh, uh, first of all what's uh, happening is a, a confirmation of uh, what uh, uh, could be said from the start uh, on the fact that what uh, what began in uh, in uh, early 2011 or December 2010, if we if we take the the, the, the early starting point in Tunisia, uh, was not going to be uh, a spring, as the media called it. That is a short-lived few months kind of uh, period through which you have some political change, overthrow of the one, uh, one despot or another, and, and that's it. And then we get into a nice, uh, well-functioning <coughs> parliamentary democracy, and this would be a face Facebook revolution, another of these color revolutions, things like that. So you have a lot of... Uh, of uh, such uh, portraying of the events in the media from the start. And we were a few, or at least uh, I for one, to uh, insist on the fact that this was a, a <coughs> completely a misrepresentation of the reality of what started. And that what started was indeed a long-term revolutionary process uh, which will uh, uh, unfold over many, many years, if not decades. Uh, when we take into account uh, also the geographic extension of, uh, of, of what, uh, what is happening. And therefore, from that perspective, uh, uh, one could say that uh, what we have is, uh, is uh, just uh, one uh, phase, I mean, depending on the countries, of course, but the countries have been going through phase after phase for those countries where the uh, revolution manage to, uh, <coughs> to, uh, to go beyond the, the, the initial starting stage of, of overthrowing the existing government. And uh, that's uh, very clearly the case in, uh, in Egypt uh, and Tunisia and actually also in Libya, uh, in the three countries where you had uh, an overthrow of the existing uh, regime. Uh, uh, you can see that the uh, the com these countries are in a state of, uh, of turmoil, uh, of, uh, of uh, instability, uh, as is uh, very uh, usual, one would say, in, in revolutionary uh, periods, uh, revolutionary eras. And, uh, and uh, uh, from that angle, uh, um, one also can add that uh, uh, one characterization of what happened uh, for those who wanted to believe that uh, the, the, uh, this Arab uprising had ended was to focus on the initial victory by uh, Islamic fundamentalist, fundamentalist forces through elections uh, in Tunisia and Egypt. That's where this happened, actually. Uh, and, uh, and again, uh, we were, let's say, a few to stress the fact that uh, this was uh, a, a, <coughs> actually, uh, in a way, unavoidable for elections held uh, shortly, briefly after the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the overthrow of the, the previous uh, regime, in light of the balance of forces, of organized forces that existed in these countries, and that uh, the uh, Islamic fundamentalist uh, period in power would not last long uh, because if we start from the real premises, the real roots of what's happening and we understand 
and that's the reason why from the, the start I've been uh, emphasizing the fact that this is a long-term revolutionary process, it is to understand it as something rooted in the social economic conditions in the region, uh, which have been um, uh, uh, characterized by uh, uh, stalled uh, development for many decades now, and uh, record rates of unemployment compared to any other region of, of, of the world, and especially youth unemployment. And that, that these were the, the real and basic uh, causes of the, of the explosion. And that means that as long as these causes are not addressed, uh, the, the process will, will carry on, will go on, and that's exactly what happened. And any new government that has no answer, uh, no solution whatsoever to these root problems will fail. And it was predictable that the Muslim Brotherhood would fail in Egypt. Again, I mean, just to show that, but this is a book which, uh, which was written before, of course, uh, 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 the 30th of June, and it, it was predicting the failure of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Morsi and, and the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, in the same way, the Nahda is faced now in Tunisia with a, with a uh, very strong uh, protest movement, and, uh, and the future of the Nahda government is also uh, at stake there. So uh, there is an ongoing process. Uh, of course, it has, like any revolutionary process uh, in history, ups and downs, periods of, uh, of, uh, of let's say, advance and, uh, and setbacks, uh, uh, and sometimes ambiguous phases. And the most ambiguous uh, uh, event in the whole uh, Arab uprising until now has been uh, what uh, Hannah will be addressing, so I, I won't uh, comment on that, but just one word about the 30th of June. <coughs> We've seen this uh, huge uh, uh, mass mobilization against uh, Morsi which actually uh, uh, was, a, uh, I would say, a very advanced experience in democracy of a mass movement asking for the recall of an elected president who is betraying the promises he made to, uh, to the people. And, and at the same time, this is the ambiguity, of course, this uh, uh, combined with a coup, military coup, and a lot of illusions, and I should say very regrettable uh, positions on uh, on the the left, the broad left, except uh, uh, one one segment of the radical left, uh, and uh, and of course the liberals and and the rest. But I leave I leave it up to uh, to Anna to discuss discuss this. And if you want, during the general discussion, we could uh, go back not only to uh, Egypt and Syria, but to uh, any of the countries of the region that you wish to. Uh, to discuss. Now let me focus uh, on, uh, on, on, on Syria uh, and start by uh, linking it to what I just said, that there is no doubt, there should be no doubt, uh, on the fact that what, is, uh, what, what started in Syria as in other countries in 2011 is part of the same revolutionary process, part of the same phenomenon, and it is uh, a product, a result of the same causes, the same basic root causes that you find uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, I spoke of, uh, of stalled development, I spoke of, uh, of unemployment, I spoke of youth unemployment. Well, Syria is definitely no exception to that. On the contrary, it's one of the most acute uh, uh, cases of, uh, of, of social economic crisis uh, in the region as a result of the, uh, uh, the neoliberal uh, policies uh, uh, implemented by, uh, by the assets, father and son, but especially by the son since uh, he came to power uh, a, do a dozen years uh, ago after the, uh, the death of his, uh, of his uh, father. So uh, Syria is a country which has seen a, a real impoverishment of especially the, the rural areas, the countryside, over the last uh, decade. Uh, uh, the level of poverty in the country has been uh, rising and uh, it reached w almost one third of the population living under the, the, the threshold of, uh, of, uh, of poverty, the national level of poverty. 
uh, unemployment uh, kept on the rise until the, the uprising, of, and uh, on the eve of the uprising, it reached, uh, well, the official figure, 15% unemployment, uh, and for the youth, over more than one third of the youth, one, over one third of unemployment in the youth between 15 and, uh, and 24, uh, among the young, uh, very, very high rate of, uh, of, uh, of unemployment. All this on a background of, uh, of uh, uh, huge social inequalities, on a background of a huge corruption, of a very corrupt regime, with the uh, cousin of, uh, of Bashar al-Assad uh, turning in a few years into the richest man of the country, and by far, uh, controlling through uh, various institutions, uh, as is commonly believed, uh, uh, over one half of the economy of the country, 60% of the economy of the country is controlled by the cousin, as I mean directly by the cousin of, uh, of Bashar al-Assad, and that's one member of the clan. Uh, all, all, all members of the clans are involved in all sorts of business, and, uh, you know, I mean, this functions uh, as a real mafia. It's a mafia-like uh, regime, and uh, that's 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 uh, the way it has been for for many 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 years. So, of course, it is this that constitutes the the the, 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 the basic, uh, the, the deep uh, root of the explosion. Of course, in co in in, uh, in uh, combination with the, the fact that you have a, a very despotic regime. Uh, one of the harshest dictatorships of the region, compared to which uh, Mubarak's Egypt was a, a, a you know haven of, uh, of uh, was a beacon of, of democracy and uh, and freedom. Uh, that's that's the the, the the reality. So no surprise if uh, Syria, in its turn, after Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Yemen, etc., uh, uh, went into the movement. And uh, uh, I should say there was also, there should, at least for me, there was no surprise in the fact that the movement could not, in Syria, achieve what it achieved in Egypt and Tunisia through a mass demonstration. And here I come to uh, uh, what I, I would describe as the three counter-revolutions that the Syrian uprising is facing. And uh, the first one is, of course, the regime, uh, the regime itself. That's uh, the, the most, uh, obvious, uh, most obvious one. And, and this regime, uh, uh, I mean, is uh, specific when compared to Egypt or Tunisia in the sense that uh, this is a regime where uh, the, uh, the rulers, since uh, uh, Assad father, have reshaped and rebuilt the uh, state apparatus. Uh, uh, I mean, the, especially the, the hard nucleus of any state apparatus are the armed forces. This is uh, basic uh, elementary Marxism, I would say. Not only Marxism, by the way. And, uh, and uh, so the... the, 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 the the, the clan, the Assad clan, has reshaped the, the, uh, the, the state in order to uh, build uh, the, the, the key military forces as a Praetorian guard of, of the regime, uh, uh, linked and controlled uh, to the regime by various uh, factors, uh, most prominent among them the sectarian factor. You have heard, like everyone now, uh, even if before that you never heard of Syria, everyone now knows that Syria that the, the, the Syrian regime uh, is uh, based on uh, one uh, sectarian minority in the country, which is around 10%, that the Alawites. There are 10% of the population, but the regime uh, uh, built on the sectarian uh, allegiance and uh, uh, esprit de corps and sectarian solidarity, and also clan, tribal, regional, regionalist uh, factors uh, uh, into building uh, uh, elite military forces that are uh, uh, completely loyal, if you want, to the regime. And therefore, that's the reason why any illusion 
and there were a lot of illusions in Syria, in the movement, at the start, that they could repeat what happened in Egypt and Tunisia and through demonstration get the regime to, to, to fall or be overthrown, well, were illusions. That is, uh, could not uh, happen in, in this way. And uh, it was uh, uh, inevitable, in a sense, that the uprising turns into a civil war because there is no way to overthrow a regime like the Syrian one without a civil war. And actually, uh, I mean, we know from the history of revolutions that peaceful revolutions are rather the exception. Huh? Uh, most revolutions have, if not started as civil wars, like the Chinese one, led very quickly to civil wars like the Russian one, the French one, etc. And, uh, and that's what you get, what you get uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in Syria. And of course, I mean, I describe the regime socially. Let me add one point to those who believe that this is an anti-imperialist regime. Uh, uh, they, they just ignore the, the history of, of the, the Assad clan in, in power uh, and the, the, the sheer opportunism on which they base their foreign policy. Uh, Syria, I mean, the Assad Syria uh, intervened in 76 to crush the Palestinian resistance and the Lebanese left in Lebanon and prevented them from, from uh, winning over the, the, the Lebanese uh, far right. Uh, uh, that was in 76. Uh, in uh, 1991, the Syrian regime fought the war against Iraq under U.S. command. It was part of the coalition in 1991. People forget such things, yes? And, uh, and, uh, 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 and therefore, we have to, uh, to, to, uh, to understand that we are not facing anything yeah, anti-imperialist, but a very opportunistic regime which would not hesitate uh, switch sides and switch alliances, provided its interests are addressed. And that's the, the whole point uh, in its uh, behavior. Uh, the second, I said, I would speak of, uh, of three counter-revolutions that the, the uh, Syrian uprising is facing. The second one uh, is represented by uh, the, uh, uh, the Gulf uh, monarchies, which are the main bastion of, uh, of reaction, if you want, social reaction uh, in, the, in the whole region. Now, these uh, monarchies uh, uh, reacted to uh, the, the, the events in the region uh, in a and the only way they actually could uh, really react, especially that their uh, godfather, uh, uh, U.S. imperialism, uh, was not in any position to intervene as a counter-revolutionary force against uprisings. So they tried to co-opt them. They tried to recuperate them. And for the Gulf monarchies, that means turning social uh, and democratic revolutions into revolutions led by forces that are no threat to them ideologically. That goes from the Muslim Brotherhood, which was heavily backed by the Emirate of Qatar, to uh, all sorts of, uh, of Salafis, uh, from the, the, the moderate to the uh, jihadist, uh, uh, and their links with the Saudi Kingdom. Uh, and uh, so these monarchies, of course, have, uh, within the Syrian uprising, uh, done their best to, uh, uh, to promote, to help what they consider uh, 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 representing, uh, let's say, uh, 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 I mean, the, the, the turn of event that they would like to see, that is, as I said, turning what could be a threat to them, that is a, a democratic social revolution, into what they could uh, very much, very well live with, which is a sectarian or uh, fundamentalist kind of, uh, of, uh, of movement. Now, in this regard, you have a convergence, despite all what you may say, you have a convergence between them and the first counter-revolutionist, the regime. The regime from day one in Syria, when you had demonstrations by 
the same type that you had everywhere else, led by young people, organized by young people, uh, networking through the social media, etc., etc. You had exactly the same, and very brave demonstrations, and uh, with a, a clear uh, social democratic and uh, anti-sectarian demands. Uh, uh, from day one, the regime has been saying, I am, we are fighting Al-Qaeda, exactly like Gaddafi did in Libya, which was a message addressed to the West, to the United States. Hey, don't, mis don't, I mean, don't make a, mi a mistake. We are your friends. We are fighting the same enemies. We are fighting Al-Qaeda. So you shouldn't uh, uh, turn against us. And so this is exactly what, what the, the Syrian regime did, but uh, said, but they did also something in that regard. They opened the jails, let the Al Qaeda guys out, in order to uh, uh, enhance this aspect within the uprising, knowing that these guys would, uh, you know, join uh, the movement. And uh, and uh, so you you have some kind of convergence. And in the Syrian opposition, uh, there's a, a very widespread belief that uh, the, especially the Al Qaeda groups are infiltrated and manipulated by the, by the regime. And this is not far-fetched. This is not far-fetched. Uh, there's certainly a certain degree of involvement of the regime in that. Uh, whether it is manipulation or not, I won't get into any speculation on that. But the fact that the regime has links with some people within this, when we know also that the regime was, the Syrian regime was actually helping jihadists go into Iraq during the U.S. occupation there, playing a very Machiavellian uh, game. Uh, uh, so the, the whole thing is very murky, to, the, to, say, uh, to say the least. So that's the, sec the second one. The third one is, of course, uh, uh, the United States, and I would add Israel uh, uh, in that regard. Uh, uh, the United States is a counter has a counter-revolutionary attitude for uh, facing Syria as it has facing all other countries in the region without exception. The United States doesn't want any, re, any state to be dismantled. It doesn't want any uh, 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 real overthrow of, of, uh, of the state. Uh, what it wants is what they called in Washington from day one an orderly transition. That is you know, uh, a change, you know, the power changing hands, but within a continuity, a basic continuity of the state. And this is based on what they call in Washington and in London, uh, the lessons of Iraq, which uh, they explain as, we made a mistake <coughs> in, Ira in Iraq, it turned into a fiasco because we dismantled this, the Basis state. We should have kept the Basis state and just removed Saddam Hussein, and did business with the Basis. And that was our, our major mistake. Had we done this, we would we would not have had this uh, the big trouble we went into in, in that country. So the lesson is clear: we have to keep uh, the regime. And uh, uh, well, you may think, well, what about Libya? But I mean, uh, before the fall of Gaddafi, I long uh, wrote a long piece explaining that actually there. Their very intervention in Libya was an attempt to co-opt the uprising and to uh, steer it, to manage it, while they were engaged in intensive negotiations with uh, Gaddafi's son, uh, you know, the LSC uh, uh, PhD uh, guy, uh, uh, who is seen by the West as the good guy, uh, uh, and wanting him to, 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 I mean, to, to get to convince his father to step down and hand him power, which would have suited very well uh, Washington, London, Paris, uh, and, and the rest. Uh, the, Syri the Libyan uprising went beyond that uh, with the insurrection uh, in Tripoli, which led to the uh, collapse of the whole regime. Uh, but that's, that's exactly, I mean, the, 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 they have the, the, the same attitude everywhere. And in Syria, they very clearly say, very clear if you see every kind of statement that came out of Washington, even during this recent chemical uh, uh, crisis, uh, they keep saying we don't want the, to, the regime to be overthrown. We don't want the regime to be overthrown. We want a 
political solution, which means also what uh, Obama called a Yemen solution one year ago. He said, we want a solution like in Yemen. What happened in Yemen? Well, in Yemen, Ali Abdullah Saleh, the president, uh, stepped down with a big smile, uh, handed power to the vice president, and remained in the country where he pulls the strings of many things. This is, this is just a mockery of any, of any real compromise. This was a real frustration for, for uh, the, 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 the radical forces in the Yemen uprising, and that's why actually it's not over also in that country. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a country where you, you don't hear of it in the news any longer, but uh, the, the movement is going on in Yemen as it is in Bahrain, as it is uh, uh, all over the region, actually. Uh, uh, so now, the, uh, uh, what, what the United States wants uh, is this kind of solution uh, for Syria. And that's why also it, uh, well, on the one hand, it doesn't want to intervene militarily like uh, they did uh, in Libya uh, 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 for reasons which, uh, uh, I mean, I don't have time to explain. If you want in the discussion, we can get into that. The, the recent flare-up of events was just because they felt, I mean, the credibility of the United States was at stake after the red lines of Obama and the, the, the use of, uh, of chemical weapons there. Uh, uh, but they kept uh, explaining that when they were contemplating strikes, that would be very, very minute, limited strikes that would not affect the balance of forces. Israel, New York Times, uh, a few, three, four days ago, you had a, no, more, one week ago, you had an, an article in the New York Times explaining that Israel is for the strikes provided they are very limited and don't change the balance of forces. So you can see the same, the same kind of attitude. Yeah. Uh, so this is to say that uh, uh, in the final instance, the, 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 the Syrian uprising has very few friends. Uh, and the problem is that even among some of the people whom one would expect to be friends of revolutions, uh, 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 it has uh, people showing rather hostile attitudes towards it, and the people taken to the propaganda of the regime uh, portraying the whole uprising as, uh, as jihadists or the rest. There are jihadist forces, we, we spoke of them, but by the all uh, 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 witness reports, and I've spoken to, to uh, uh, people I really have confidence, Syrian militants who go back and forth and all that and know very very well the whole situation in the opposition controlled areas. They, they can tell you that the, the, the Al-Qaeda two groups uh, don't represent more than at most 10% of, uh, of the fighters, of the, the armed people, uh, and that the other kind of uh, Salafist or whatever uh, uh, may represent 30% more, but that the, the, the majority remains uh, uh, the uh, non-directly religious kind of, uh, of forces, uh, or let's say the, the, uh, those who don't have this program of an Islamic state uh, in, in, in the country. That's speaking of the armed uh, groups. Now, as for the, 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 the popular uh, uh, opposition, uh, well, it, it is uh, overwhelmingly not any uh, interested in any kind of Islamic state or whatever but in what, has, what have been the goals of the uprising from day one, which are uh, basically uh, democratic uh, and, uh, and social. So uh, for all these reasons, I think it is really very important to, uh, to uh, express solidarity, uh, to fight politically in solidarity with the Syrian revolution, uh, with the Syrian uprising, to build links with uh, the Syrian uh, 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 opposition, uh, uh, I mean, of course, for, for people like us here with the, the, the left wing among them, uh, 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 and, uh, and, uh, and, well, to, uh, uh, I mean, really counter the, the, the propaganda that is uh, uh, related to, to to, to the regime related to Moscow, which 
by the way, some people believe is still uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, uh, although, I mean, in terms of, uh, of, of social character, uh, the United States appears as progressive compared to, to what uh, Putin's Russia is with uh, one, a ridiculous flat, uh, uh, flat tax, uh, flat tax, you know, and all that. I mean, terrible uh, social economic conditions. And with, uh, with a country where you have Baron Rob I mean, Robert Barron's uh, uh, like Gazprom and the rest is uh, the oil uh, oil companies and, uh, and and all this is believed by some people to be to be uh, uh, anti-imperialist. I mean, this is a very very peculiar view of things. So uh, that's I mean, uh, I think uh, uh, a few of the points I wanted to to, to stress and with a real in, I mean, insistence on on the fact that uh, uh, it is important to come out in solidarity with the, 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 the Syrian uprising and not to be shy about that, not to be shy about that. Uh, if we believe in the right of people to self-determination, if we believe in the right of people to democratically elect whatever they want, then even if we had an uprising uh, where Islamic forces were leading, this should be change our position. Otherwise, why did you take the positions you took with, about Gaza when Hamas was leading? Or, I would remind a lot of people, with the Iraqi resistance, which was far more under uh, uh, Islamic jihadist control than anything you have in Syria. <coughs> Thank you.